Hey sex creators, so today we are going to be talking about how to solve uh, percent problems. So let's start with our vocabulary setup. Some of these words are going to be pretty familiar from when we talked about ratios and rates. So let's see, a proportion is an equation that shows that two ratios are equivalent. Remember, equivalent means the same. In a percent proportion, one ratio compares a part to the whole. The other ratio is the equivalent percent written as a fraction with a denominator of 100. So let's look at what that means. So how do you compare part and whole? So we can do it as a fraction. For example, two fifths. The part is the top, the whole is the bottom. So what do we call the part or the number on the top? We call that the numerator. And the whole or the number on the bottom is the denominator. We can also use a ratio. So using the information in the first ratio, which is this one, we can fill in the others. So we can write two to five. We can write two to five. We can also write it as a percent. So two fifths equals something, the percent, over 100. So in order to get from 5 to 100, we have to multiply by 20. So 2 times 20 would give us 40. So 2 fifths is equal to 40 over 100, which would be 40%. So 40% of 5 is 2. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next page. So there's a couple of ways that we can solve percent problems. The first way is to use a number line. So if you know the part and the percent, you can find the whole or the total. We've used bar diagrams, or in a previous lesson, they used bar diagrams to solve percent problems. Today we're gonna look at using what's called a double number line. And all that means is it's two number lines stacked on top of each other. So example number one, it says 10 is 25% of what number? So that means that we have the part and we need to find the whole. So we're gonna use a double number line to model 25% and 10. To model 25%, we're dividing a number line into four parts. So we have zero to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and 75 to 100. So there are one, two, three, four sections. And in our second number line, we're gonna write 10 at each 25% mark and add 10 at each mark to find the whole. So we start at zero and 10, 20, 30, 40. So to find the number that's at the 100% mark, would go straight down or we would add tens. And the number 40 is at the 100% mark. See, they are lined up. The 100% and the 40 are at the same spot. So that means that 10 is 25% of 40. Example number two says country music makes up 75% of Landon's music library. If he's downloaded 90 country music songs, how many songs does Landon have in his music library? So we have the percent and we have the whole. So we have to use the double number lines to model 75% and 90. So to model 75%, we'll divide our number line into four parts again, zero to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and 75 to 100. So we know that country music 
would only go up to about this line right here at 75%. And that's three spaces to zero. So we divide 90 or the whole divided by three to find 30. So we'd find, we'd add 30 at each mark to find our whole number. So 30, 60, 90, 120. The number 120 is at the 100% mark. So Landon has 120 songs in his music library. So let's look at some practice problems. So we'll start with A. So I'm gonna draw my number line on my paper in another color so I can see it a little bit better. So since I'm looking at 50%, if 30 is 50% of what number? So I'm gonna draw my number lines. I have 0%, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. And then I'll have my second number line. So 30 is 50% of what number? So I can use this number line to figure out where or what the whole would be. I can also look at this and say I know that 50% is right in the middle or halfway so I can also double it and know that the end would be 60. So 30 is 50% of 60. Sometimes it helps just to have that number line there so you can see where everything lines up. B, 60 is 20% of what number? So we'll do the same thing, but this time we are looking at intervals of 20%. So we have zero, 20%, 40 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100%. And in our second number line, twenty percent is going to be sixty. So then we'll add sixty each time to get up to 100. So 60 plus 60 would be 120, plus 60 more would be 180, plus 60 more would be 240, and plus 60 more would be 300. So 60 is 20% of 300. So we're gonna move on to using percent proportion to find or to solve percent problems. So we have our diagram here that shows part whole and percent. So we can use this diagram to show the part, the whole, and the percent. So example number three says 15 is 30% of what number? So we can plug in all of these numbers. So I'm gonna write kind of another version of this proportion off to the side. So part over whole is equal to percent over 100. So we can plug in all of our numbers into this frame to set up our proportion. So 15%, 15, sorry, is 30% of what number? So we plug in our part 50 and we plug in our percent 30. So our proportion is 15 over something equals 30 over 100. So we need to make 
the first fraction into an equivalent fraction. So in order to get from 30 to 15, we divide by 2. So we'll divide 100 by 2 to get 50. So that tells us that 15 is 30% of 50. So now let's fill in number 4. 225 is 75% of what number? So our part is 225 and our percent is 75. So in order to find what the bottom number will be, what our denominator will be, we have to either multiply or divide to make the bottom numbers equivalent. So 75, since 75 times 3 equals 225, we have to multiply 100 by 3 as well. So 220, sorry, 75 times 3, remember, is 225. And 100 times 3 is 300. So 225 is 75% of 300. So let's try a couple of these. So let's start with D. So 75 is 15% of what number? So I'm going to set up my proportion. So I know my percent so it's going to be 15 over 100. We're trying to find the whole, and our part is 75. So first we need to figure out how to get from 15 to 75. So in order to get from 15 to 75, we would have to either multiply or divide. So we can multiply 15 to get to 75. We multiply 15 times 5, so 100 times 5. And 100 times 5 would equal 500, so 75%, or sorry, 75 is 15% of 500. Let's try E. So E says 9 is 36% of what number? So we'll set up our proportion again. Our percent is 36. We don't know our whole and our part is 9. So to get from 9 to 36, 36 needs to divide by 4. So that means 100 needs to be divided by 4. And if we divide 100 by 4, we get 25. So 9 is 36% of 25. And let's look at F. 7 is 70% of what number? So we'll set up our proportion. We know our percent is 70, and our part is 7. So to get from 70 to 7, we have to divide by 10. So that means that to get from 100 to our whole, we have to divide by 10 as well. So 100 divided by 10 is 10. So 7 is 70% of 10. So let's go to our last page, our last example. So the example 5 says before 1982 pennies were 95% zinc and 5% copper. If 100 pennies minted in 1980 have an approximate mass of 15 grams of copper, what is the total mass of 100 pennies? 
So our percent is five because we're looking at copper and our part is 15 because there's 15 grams of copper. So we need to find the whole. So we write our proportion 15 over something equals five over 100. So since five times three gives us 15, we have to multiply 100 times three to get 300. So that tells us that the total mass of 100 pennies is 300 grams. So you have a couple of practice problems and you have a page on Canvas to practice as well. If you have any questions or need any help, please let me know. I am here to help you. Have a great day, sixth graders.